This is the Master Brewers Podcast, brought to you by the Master Brewers Association of the Americas, a volunteer organization dedicated to continually improving the products and processes of our membership since 1887. Let's go! 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 Master Brewers brings you interviews with the industry's best and brightest in brewing science, technology, and operations. This Master Brewers podcast is proudly sponsored by Hopsteiner, a global leader in the hop industry focused on quality, sustainability, and innovation in new hop varieties and hop products. Contact our brewery sales team to provide you with the hop-related tools you need to craft your next great beer. For more information, visit hopsteiner.com. Additional support provided by... Get to know Proximity Malt. We malt superior, European-style, low-protein varieties grown close to home in Delaware and Colorado. Domestically grown, precisely malted to style. With our team of seasoned experts and two brand-new malt houses, try what's really new in malt. Check us out at www.proximitymalt.com. There's two leading causes of accidents each and every year since the national board, who's our governing body on boilers, has been keeping records. And the two leading causes of accidents each year are operator error, poor maintenance, which is under one category, and low water cutoffs. So it's important that training be such a high priority in this whole process and that's probably the biggest part of the equation that's missing this week on the show dave boffman joins us to talk about boiler safety mistakes many brewers make when purchasing steam boilers the pros and cons of atmospheric versus forced draft boilers and more this episode originally aired in october of 2016 we'll be back next week with a brand new episode that you won't want to miss You open your recent TQ article with a really powerful question. You write, when working only a few feet away from a piece of equipment with more expansive energy than dynamite, you need to ask yourself, do I have the proper training to operate this equipment safely? Could you take a minute to put this force into perspective for our listeners and maybe mention some accidents that have occurred? Yeah, well, when you think about it, the the energy itself that, that happens when you go from uh, water under pressure and when it hits the atmosphere, it actually expands so fast in the blink of an eye that that expansive power has more energy than what dynamite has. And so if you put that into perspective, if you just looked at a small boiler that's uh, the size of your desk even, maybe three foot across by six foot long, and you multiply that by uh, 16 to 1700 times just in the in the snap of your finger that's how much expansive force it has it's going to expand into that space and so when you think about it uh, that's pretty incredible and uh, most people by all means have no idea that that boiler has that much power Your article indicates that it may not be the best idea for a startup brewery to purchase a boiler from their brew house manufacturer. Could you please elaborate on some of the reasons behind that? Well, where we're at in this industry is is no different than some others. Uh, And what it is is that you've got brew house manufacturers that package the equipment together. And along with this packaging of their own brew house equipment, they will package together uh, sometimes the, the boiler and the chiller and, and other aspects. But in particular, the boiler being the heart of the system and having so much uh, liability in its operation, the brew house manufacturers have to carry a high technical expertise in its application, installation, startup, and, and operation, and operator training. And the majority of these manufacturers do not carry that they're selling these boilers uh, and packaging them as a service to the customer but in my mind it's actually a disservice it'd be like me selling brew house equipment right i know nothing about brew house equipment and so it's the same thing within the boilers some brewery manufacturers have started 
uh, working with companies like ourselves, though, to be able to still supply the boilers uh, and all the auxiliary equipment. And the auxiliary equipment is so important to the operation of the brew house and the boiler. And, but there's a couple of manufacturers that get it and uh, have understood uh, that they need to partner up with somebody that knows what they're doing. Right. Do you, th- do you think it makes more sense to source a boiler from the local mechanical contractor who's also going to be installing the steam pipe and the ancillary equipment, or should brewers purchase boilers directly from a company like Allied? Sometimes the local mechanical contractor does have a, a, a high level of expertise, and in other areas, not so much. Uh, there's a lot of problems in the industry, and uh, mechanical contractors are great plumbers and pipe fitters and welders and electricians, but they may not be necessarily versed uh, without a set of drawings up front on how to put the equipment in. And for their end of it, uh, on, on buying the equipment and selling it in, it's the same thing. Mechanicals do a good job of installing, but they might not necessarily be versed on what all it takes uh, within that boiler system and auxiliary equipment. Uh, to put together what's really needed. So uh, my two cents worth is to get together with a competent uh, manufacturer who will lay out all the different equipment, the boiler, the blowdown separator, the chemical feed system, uh, the boiler feed water system with a preheat in it, uh, the condensate receivers that go out in the plant if it's needed. But there's so much that goes with it. So I guess that's a a long answer to a short question, Um, and I don't think it's a one-size-fits-all proposition. I think there's some areas where mechanicals uh, do have a high level of of competency and may handle a line of boilers uh, that they think would be applicable to that uh, particular installation. Coming up. That whole system has oil in it, and if that oil comes back to the boiler feed water system and ultimately to the boiler, the boiler will not function properly at all. I'm John Bryce, and you're listening to the Master Brewers Podcast from the Master Brewers Association of the Americas. Support for this podcast is brought to you by ABS Commercial is a full-service brewery and parts outfitter. From our Raleigh headquarters to our Denver office, we proudly offer brew houses and fermenters from three barrels and up, yeast brinks, boilers, kegs, chillers, tri-clamp, and other stainless parts, all with the quickest delivery and lead times in the industry. Learn more at abs-commercial.com or call 877-BREW-ABS. ABS Commercial. We are brewers. Additional support provided by Whitcomb Selinski McAuliffe PC serves all brewers in registering and protecting trademarks, navigating the label approval process, and assisting with OSHA inspections and safety compliance. Please go to WSMLawPC.com for more information. Here's what's coming up on the Master Brewers calendar. If you're barrel aging, don't miss the May 9th webinar screening for lactobacillus acetotolerans in a brewery setting. District Northwest meets in beautiful Hood River May 10th and 11th. District St. Paul, Minneapolis meets May 16th at the Star Keller in New Ulm. District St. Louis is at Old Bakery Brewery May 16th. The District Southeast Spring Meeting and 4th Annual Crawfish Boil is May 17th and 18th in Tampa. And District Northern Illinois meets at Half Acre Beer May 31st. It's time to start making plans for the 2019 Master Brewers Conference. If you can only make it to one conference in 2019, this should be it. We're really mixing things up this time and heading to the Calgary Convention Center to see how Alberta celebrates Halloween. Check out the full count of events at mbaa.com for more details or to find a district meeting near you. Now back to the show. So 
So it sounds like your your advice really is then, uh, regardless of whether you're sourcing the boiler via a mechanical contractor or via the brew house manufacturer or or or, or anything else, um, that the, the your message is really to just to make sure the manufacturer is involved in that process and that uh, a competent manufacturer is able to kind of you know review uh, the design of the system before action is taken. That's exactly right, John. And in so many run problems or installation related problems so if you can attend to not only the boiler room but uh, actually be involved it's like with us we want to see the steam distribution out and the condensate back Uh, you want to make sure that the boiler installation is proper and then the follow-up to all that is the startup and the training most places when they sell the equipment don't do the startup and for us, every boiler that goes across the globe, we personally start each boiler up ourselves. And that allows two things. It allows us when we get to the job site to address any issues within the system itself that needs to be addressed. It lets us do the startup, which not only is starting the boiler up, but cleaning out the whole system. That whole system has oil in it. And if that oil comes back to the boiler feed water system and ultimately to the boiler, the boiler will not function properly at all. So it's important that all that oil get cleaned out during the startup process, i.e. Uh, bypassing the condensate at startup. And the other thing it allows you to do is train the operating personnel during that startup process so that they can operate the boiler properly. And then the follow-up to that is, is that anyone who buys a boiler from us, it allows them to come to our three-day hands-on boiler school at no cost. That's being missed in the industry is the training. Right. And there's two leading causes of accidents each and every year since the national board, who's our governing body on boilers, has been keeping records. And the two leading causes of accidents each year are operator error, poor maintenance, which is under one category, and low water cutoffs. So it's important that training be such a high priority in this whole process. And that's probably the biggest part of the equation that's missing. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, now, uh, shifting gears a little bit, do you have any advice for the small craft brewer who needs to operate a low-pressure boiler near max pressure uh, to get an adequate boiler in their brew kettle? Man, what a great question. <laughs> uh, the, you're limited by a lot of factors, and part of it is is that a low-pressure steam boiler, i.e. anything under 15 PSI, Uh, Once you start getting up close to the set pressure of the relief valve, the relief valve will start to weep and depends upon uh, if you're under load conditions or if you're not under load conditions on the type of boiler that you have and the type of firing mechanism you have. Most boilers in the marketplace are on off. That is that they've got a set pressure that it hits at the top end and then you've got a differential that uh, is subtractive. So if you put a differential in your pressure control, it'll drop down to a set pressure and turn back on. The, the problem with it is, is that it's just like being in a car, starting it up, flooring the gas pedal, running it up to a certain speed, and then turning it off. Sometimes it'll coast a little bit, and actually the speed can, can go on up if you don't have any, uh, you know, if you're not going up a hill or what have you. And so the same thing with the boiler, it can creep a little bit. And so this is a problem in the industry. Uh, If you've got a full modulation burner, which is like a cruise control on your car, as the steam pressure is rising, the firing rate is decreasing. And and the same in the opposite. As the steam pressure decreases, the firing rate increases. So you hold a better steady pressure. But the problem comes when you're really under no load uh, and all of a sudden you open up all the jackets on a brew kettle, let's say if you got three jackets and they're not staged, uh, you're starting to dump steam all at once and the steam pressure just drops and the boiler can't recover real quick. Um, so uh, a lot of it has to do with how you set your, your pressures, the type of firing sequence that you put on the burner, uh, full modulation is much more preferred. And there's the majority, I'd say, of the manufacturers do not use full modulation on their burners. I have noticed which, that. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, for us, it's standard equipment. But yeah. the problem with it is, is that that adds cost. So as, yeah. as the brewers are looking at cost, 
uh, they see, well, one boiler is higher than the other. Yeah. yeah, well, one boiler's got different apparatus on it, which means that you've got a better temperature, a more even temperature, uh, which gives you a better boil. Right. That makes a lot of sense. So uh, this question somewhat relates to the previous question, and, and I've got my own own opinion here, but I'm curious if you think an atmospheric boiler or a boiler with a blower is a better choice in, in a small brewery like that. Yeah, an atmospheric brings pluses and minuses to the table. The plus is it's it's cheaper. It's less expensive. Uh, it uses the atmospheric chimney principle to get rid of the products of combustion. Uh, that is, hot air rising produces the draft to get rid of the, the gases, uh, the combustion gases. Problems come is if you've got a negative air pressure in your boiler room or in your plant, the negative air pressure dramatically affects the combustion on an atmospheric burner. And the atmospheric burner is going to be straight on off. That is, it turns on, turns off. It also, it, but the, the pros to it are is that it's, much less expensive the the backside of that is is that when the boiler shuts off it's constantly pulling cold air through it because of the chimney effect Mm -hmm. so you're you're constantly drafting through the boiler, which means it's going to cool off quicker and be less efficient a forced draft boiler is just that it forces the air and gas together to give you a better combustion uh, and a higher efficiency and then when it shuts off the dampers, if you're using full modulation, go closed, and you have no chimney effect as far as the losses through the boiler. Um, so, force draft itself also allows you the ability to utilize full modulation in your firing sequence, which not only adds efficiency, but gives you a much more steady pressure, which relates to temperature, which then relates to your boil. Yeah. So, uh, uh, force draft is, is more advantageous in that respect. Okay. I guess I'll just add to that because, like you said earlier, what we're seeing is there's a lot of uh, force draft uh, boilers out there that don't have the full modulation. And my advice to a small craft brewer is if you're choosing between an atmospheric boiler and a force draft without modulation, I would pick the atmospheric one because it's going to... Um, it's going to cycle back much faster instead of going, you know, it doesn't have to go through this long purge period. And so when you are trying to operate at a pressure that's, um, you know, that's very close to your maximum pressure, at least it, it fires, it fires back up quicker when it needs to. Um, but being yeah. that all that being said, I, I agree with you that a, uh, a, a, you know, a, a force draft, um, that has the full modulation, uh, is certainly, a you know, is, is probably preferred. And, and what you're saying is true. The, when you mentioned the purge, there's what's called a pre-purge, which means you've got to have four air changeovers inside of the boiler of the air before it fires up. The, the thing with atmospheric, though, is that your combustion dramatically changes from summer to winter, and you're brewing summer and winter. And because it depends upon the chimney effect to get rid of the product's combustion, You've got a lot less draft in the summertime than what you do in the wintertime. And the other downside of it is that it uses rectification for its flame signal. That is a flame rod, which is uh, dramatically affected by both humidity um, and temperature. And what we've got in a brewery is typically high humidity, i.e. washdowns and so forth. And uh, boiler rooms themselves have a high temperature, and flame rectification does not like that. So typically, the atmospheric boiler will encounter more flame failures uh, than what the forced draft boiler does, where it's using ultraviolet as far as its uh, flame detection. So there's a lot of pros and cons along the way to it. Um, But there again, you've got to weigh it out and what's best for your particular installation. and, And... Try to minimize those high and low points uh, in your in your uh, on off points on your steam pressures. That's great. Do you have any advice for other than don't do it uh, to brewers who are who may be considering purchasing a used boiler? Well, that's a great question too, John. Uh, anytime you buy a used boiler, you should buy a rebuilt boiler. I wouldn't buy anything just used without buying it uh, with a warranty for one. Uh, and if you buy a rebuilt boiler, uh, in our case, if we're rebuilding a boiler, which a number of breweries we've done uh, rebuilt boilers for, 
it carries the same warranty as a brand new boiler. And so a rebuilt means is that the controls themselves are brand new. Uh, typically, the fire tubes are brand new. The boiler has been rebuilt. The only thing that, uh, that is really uh, of status quo is the uh, boiler shell itself. Uh, buying just used off the market, uh, there's so many liabilities involved with it, both to the person selling the boiler, but also whoever's utilizing the boiler, putting the boiler in. There's this whole liability stream of everybody that's involved with that boiler. And if it hasn't actually been rebuilt and if it's just used, uh, you can get yourself into problems. That was Dave Boffman here on the Master Brewers podcast. Check out Dave's article in the Master Brewers Technical Quarterly. I'll add a link to the show notes or just type steam boilers into the industry's best search bar at mbaa.com. It's time to start making plans for the 2019 Master Brewers Conference. If you can only make it to one conference in 2019, this should be it. We're really mixing things up this time and heading to the Calgary Convention Center to see how Alberta celebrates Halloween. You can find all the details on the Meetings tab at mbaa.com. Did you know that Master Brewers now has a mobile app? TQ articles, podcasts, webinars, Ask the Brewmasters, and more, all in the same place. Search Master Brewers in the App Store to download it now. Just like that one day when we came around there. Since there's that one thing there.